In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a couple of really interesting, unique, sort of farmhouse, rustic, maybe even masculine towel holders. If you want to learn how to do it, well, then follow me. What's up, Glue Dots? I'm Elaine, the Midnight Crafter, and today's project is, you know, I've been doing a lot of glam lately, so I thought I would change it up a bit for you guys out there that are not the biggest glam fans. So I'm making some rustic sort of farmhouse towel holders, sort of a set that you can put together or you don't have to, or you, but I thought they were kind of cool and um, I wanted to share them with you. But before we get to it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and join our glue dot family and then hit the bell next to it that will inform you every time i upload a new video also give me a thumbs up if you like my videos and leave me a comment down there because i really do love hearing from you i'm looking forward to showing you this project so what do you think i think we should get to it oh don't forget to check that description box down below for all the extra items that you might need for this project and all my contact info and a chance to win a bling owl keychain. And I do that drawing once a month. Okay, now let's go do the project. Getting started on this project, we're gonna be taking our little shelf unit here and we're gonna be bending it, bending it into submission. <laughs> so what we're gonna be doing first is we wanna bend these little legs. You can actually, if you want, I'm gonna use my spray paint can sort of to help me as a guide so I can work around it. And we're just gonna bend those as best we can around to shape them however you'd like. If you want them shaped all the way around, it's a little hard to shape them all the way around. If you want them just to be straight and flat, um, initially I'm gonna kind of press them so that they go as much as they can around the can and then I can around the can. <laughs> and then I'm gonna continue shaping them afterwards, but at least this will get us so they're all pretty similar or as close to the same as they could possibly be. So do that to all four of the legs and once you get them shaped the way you want them, then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have mine all bent like this, made it a cute little stand. And now the next thing we're gonna do, this is really smooth and smooth, <laughs> straight across here. And we want that to be curved, like um, curving downwards. So I'm again gonna use my can of paint. I hope this doesn't explode on me at some point. I don't think it will, but anyway, we're gonna be using our can of paint and pressing around here put some weight into it some muscle into it and we're going to get it as curved as you want i want to get it a little more curved than that so i'm going to keep working on it and once it is curved which i'll do off camera so don't bore you all with that um, we're then going to our legs are going to be sort of see how they're sort of sticking outwards we're going to just bend those so that they're straight again if you're struggling to get these bent like all together just do one at a time they're definitely easier to bend one at a time you just kind of have to work your fingers in there and get it done that way okay so here's what i've got so i've got my little scooped out thing i got the general shape of my piece here and then i put it down make sure it's not wobbling at all and i'm going to take it out and spray paint it i'm going to use this it doesn't really matter what you use per se but i thought i wanted to do mine black and i think that'll fit my decor and almost looks like a wrought iron so that's what i'm going to do and i'll be right back Okay, so here we have this piece all painted. Um, I started kind of trying out the next steps. So you can see some of my paints chipped off, but not to worry. We can touch that up later. I would recommend when you spray your project though that you let it maybe dry overnight. I obviously didn't because I'm trying to get this done for you guys. So it's fine, I'll just have to touch it up. So the next thing we're gonna do is take our nautical rope and we're gonna start. And you're gonna wanna start underneath the first one and then bring your, your nautical rope so it's 
a little bit longer than the edge, maybe about two, three inches longer, because once we weave it all through, we're gonna be folding that piece under and gluing it so that we can have a nice finished edge. So start from the underside and then go over the next one, and you will be able to adjust. So if you need a little extra or you have too much, it's not a problem, you can adjust it. So just gonna go over, under, over, under, super easy, adjust as you need. Make sure they're nice and tight across there. It'll just make for a much nicer looking project. Then we're gonna get, we get to the end here and you have this piece. So we're just gonna take that and go underneath and glue that to the bottom side. All right, so now we have that piece and what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue on here and going exactly the opposite, just like weaving is, pretty easy stuff. So now we're gonna go over that one. So you could actually do this while you're sitting in front of the TV or whatever. So I'm gonna keep weaving this and I'll show you some of the progress along the way. Here's how it's coming along so far. I'm in my fourth, starting my fourth row here and I'm gonna keep going. I think it's gonna look really cool. So here's where we are with one whole thing of <laughs> the nautical rope. And what I'm gonna be doing is attaching the second piece. And a little trick that I like to use when I attach nautical rope to um, continue around on something, I don't cut it off bluntly. Like these are cut just blunt. Um, what I like to do is cut it at the angle that the rope is already twisting in. So it's in this direction. So I'm gonna cut it at that angle. You can see here what I'm doing, I'm cutting along the direction of the rope. And then it also doesn't unravel as quickly that way, so it gives you a little bit of working time. And then we have this edge here. I put my hot glue on there, which helps to hold the whole thing on itself, for one thing. But then it also gives a much cleaner attachment to the other piece coming together. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure those cool off and they're stuck together nicely. And as soon as that is stuck together, I'm gonna continue on with the pattern that I'm doing. Should take two and a half to three, probably three entire things of nautical rope to finish this out. So as you can see here, I'm at the end of the weaving process and I just wanna finish this off and what I'm gonna do is just, I'm squeezing that little piece of rope right inside there and kind of making some room by pulling back those other rows just enough that I can get that right into that hole there. And then pull it all the way to the end until it's nice and tight. And then that way it'll have a really nice even look just like the beginning part and much cleaner start and finish. And then we're just gonna cut that off and stick it underneath. So you can see I have a few little white spots where the paint came off and it's showing. You can either leave it that way or we can be touching it up. But I do wanna point out to you something. These little rubber knobs here, they do not dry. The paint just does not dry on those. And you can see that because it's all over my hands. <laughs> so if you're gonna be painting, pull those little knobs off first. If you're gonna leave it white, then it's not a problem at all. So if you guys are enjoying my projects here, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and let me know what you think about this project, okay? So we're gonna move on to the next one. So here I have it finished and I've actually gone through and touched up the little white spots that were scratched. I'm gonna show you this all done up in the end here, but what I did wanna say is I would recommend either leaving this white or if you do decide you wanna spray it a different color, aside from letting it dry thoroughly overnight, you may wanna give it like two coats and then maybe even a clear coat and let it dry between coats because I did find that this scratched easily. So I ended up just using a teeny tiny little paintbrush and going in there and it was really kind of a pain. So you're welcome to do that if you want, but either I would suggest either leaving it white or taking other precautions when painting it. Okay, for the next project, what we're gonna be doing is cutting, first of all, our little garden fence piece here. And in order to do that, I'm gonna be using this hot knife. I will leave a link for this down below. And if you can't find the down below, the description box, if you're on a phone, there's a little itty bitty 
um, downward pointing triangle next to the title and you can hit that and it will give you the description box. If you're on a laptop or a tabletop computer, desktop computer, then there is the show more down below and that will take you to the description box. So anyway, moving right along here, what we're gonna be doing is taking our hot knife and we're gonna be cutting the shape out that we want. We're not gonna be using the whole piece. Now where I'm gonna be cutting is right down here in this crease, but going across because I wanna keep this little swirl in here. So I'm kind of gonna cut it right there. I'm gonna do that on both sides and then down here at the bottom, I'm just gonna be cutting it straight off right here. So taking my hot knife, make sure you, if you do do this, you do it in a well ventilated area because it does smoke a little bit, quite a bit actually. We're gonna be coming straight down right over here and leaving our little swirl on there. But again, you can do however you want your pattern to look. And then for here, I'm just gonna be going down in between to cut this piece straight off here. So this is the shape that you're gonna be having for this side. And we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. And then once you have that cut off, we're gonna go ahead and cut off this bottom little spike part. And we're gonna put this piece aside for right now um, because we're gonna work on the other piece. So for this one here, what we're gonna be doing is cutting off this bottom part here. We're gonna leave this crossbar and this crossbar, and we're gonna be removing these two center pieces. You may need to get some help on this because this stuff's not the easiest to cut, but get yourself a good pair of wire cutters and the better the wire cutters, the easier it will be. And then get in there. Whoops, I almost cut it in the wrong spot. <laughs> get in right underneath that piece and it's going to take some muscle so those of you with arthritis or other um, problems i would get someone to help you with this part if you want to make this project you can also use if you have a um, little saw you can cut it off that way as well now sometimes the cross piece comes unattached from here, which is not good for this one, but it is good for this because we do want to remove these two center ones. This came unattached from here, so there's really no need then to cut that off because we can just cut it off here and save ourselves the extra time because that piece just needs to go. So that's one way to get it gone. So I'm just left now with removing this one piece here and then we'll be moving on to the next step. So this is the piece we want to be left with right there. To have the bottom little bar and the top rest of it here. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is bending this piece here and this is what's gonna form the hanging part of our towel bar. So you wanna make sure that wherever you decide to bend it, that you do the same on both sides. So if you wanna measure it, go ahead and measure it. Um, but if you don't measure it, just make sure you have the both same on both sides. And go ahead and bend that piece up. You need a good pair of pliers for that. So if you yourself don't have these tools, then maybe raid your husband's stuff, or maybe you're the one with the tools. <laughs> Who knows? I have my own set of tools. All right, and then I'm just gonna measure and make sure that I have the same distance down that I have on this side. So I'm just gonna use this little piece here as a measurement so I have an idea of where to bend it. You can see this piece came off of there, like I said earlier, but I'm gonna reattach that later on so that won't be a problem. Okay, so now that we have that piece done, we're gonna be taking our little piece of um, garden fence here, and we're gonna be attaching that on here. So this bottom line here, we want it to line up with this one here on that, and then kind of even it to both sides. We're gonna be flipping this upside down. So if you're working on a table, because this part's already bent, obviously it won't lay flat, so it's gonna hang off the edge. Put your piece in place there, lining up this bottom part, 
And then what we're gonna do is between our E6000 and our regular hot glue, we're gonna be gluing this these two pieces together. So anywhere that they have contact, th that's where you're gonna wanna be gluing. So the most, I like to do wherever the most contact is, to so do that with the E6000 or similar type adhesive because this is really the one that's gonna hold it together. The hot glue is kind of just a temporary thing, so keep that in mind. And then in the places that you know that are really firmly in place, go ahead and put some extra E6000 on top to really be sure that it's gonna hold well. You would, the last thing you want is this nice piece you made falling apart with somebody trying to get a towel off of it. And then once you're pretty sure you've covered most of the places that are touching with the E6000, then go ahead and take your hot glue and kind of go over some of the other spots that you think you can maybe fill in with that hot glue just to give that extra little bit of support. Once you feel like you've got enough glue in there to kind of hold and support it, I really like to use parchment paper. So what I'm gonna do is take this parchment paper, put it right on top, cause it won't stick to the glue. And then I'm gonna put some heavy books and stuff on top of there just to make sure everything holds. And I'm not gonna do anything else with this until tomorrow. And then once it's completely dry, we'll remove the parchment paper and go ahead, take it outside and spray paint it the color of your choice. I'm gonna be doing one black and I think I'll be also making a white one as well, just to kind of see the difference. But I'm gonna do the black one because it's gonna go with our first project. The white one's just gonna be to see what white looks like. Okay, here's the black one that I made yesterday. The other one I told you I'm gonna spray paint white. So I'm gonna, just for the sake of being able to continue on, you're gonna see them both at the very end. But I think it looks pretty darn cool at this point. Okay, so what I'm gonna be doing to help tie this in with our other project is using my nautical rope, and I'm gonna be wrapping this whole bottom part for a couple of reasons. For one, I wanna thicken it up a little bit. For two, it does still have some sharp little edges here on the corners, and when somebody's taking in a towel on and off from there, you don't want it to get scratched up or snagged or them scratched either. So we're gonna take the nautical rope and start from the back side and glue that nautical rope down behind it. Let that dry really well and what we're going to start doing is wrapping our bottom wire here with this nautical rope all the way around. That way I think it'll give really nice coordinated effect with the other piece that we did. You may want to add some E6000 on this as well just to make sure. Um, I'm going to do that at the end just so that I don't get it on me in the process. Then we're just going to start wrapping our nautical rope around and then we're just going to keep going around and around and, and you probably occasionally are going to want to put a little bit of glue just to keep it from untwisting and just to make it easier for you. So throw some hot glue on there. So I finished wrapping. I've come around and I've glued the other end. For sure at this point I'm going to go through and put my E6000 just to make sure that this rope does not go anywhere. Then we're gonna let this dry and I'm gonna show it to you. If you would like to, you can actually add some more nautical rope into these areas or if you wanna do twist them up with um, some twine or something like that, knock yourself out. So you guys ready to see this put together? Did you hit the like button yet? And did you give me that thumbs up and leave me a comment? Because I'm not showing it to you until you do. <laughs> Just kidding. Hang on, let's go check them out.